My name is Walter Grayman, and I'm representing the WDSA History Project. The purpose of this project is to document the history of water distribution system analysis. A key part of this project is to interview people who have made significant contributions in the field of water distribution system analysis. Our interview today is with uh, Professor Dragon Savage. Dragon is Professor of Hydroinformatics at Exeter University in the UK and has been instrumental in the development and application of mathematical methods to water distribution systems. He has authored over 400 papers and reports in this area and has been mentor and advisor to dozens of students in this area. Kurt Dragon, you're recognized widely as a global leader in hydroinformatics. Can you tell us a little bit about hydroinformatics and how you, your background and how you got from a standard engineering uh, training into this high-tech field? Thanks, Walter. Um, hydroinformatics is, is an area um, which crosses the boundaries between water engineering and science and uh, computer um, science, um, artificial intelligence, ICT um, applications, and environmental engineering. So it's an interdisciplinary um, kind of field. And um, I got into it via the systems approach to um, addressing uh, problems in engineering. Um, my background is in civil engineering and after five years of um, kind of education to a bachelor or master's degree, whatever that level these days is, um, I uh, started working for the industry. So I didn't go into academia immediately um, after graduation. And the work that I was doing was mostly into uh, reservoir operation, design, uh, hydraulic structures. So that kind of led me into the research on uh, water systems optimization because that was a very strong field in the 60s and 70s. And, um, you know, water distribution system wasn't even on, on my horizon at that time. So after a few years in, um, in the consultancy business, I decided um, I wanted more excitement. And that was the time in the 80s when uh, personal computers came into the fore and I started developing little pieces of software uh, to uh, ease my work at the company. And that led me into a PhD that was again into water systems um, kind of modeling and optimization. Uh, but I um, attended um, a course at the University of Manitoba in Canada, where at the time there were leading uh, figures of the systems analysis, uh, Ian Golter, Slobodan Simonovic, uh, Don Byrne, Barbara Lenz. Um, so that again kind of gave me open uh, the whole new uh, perspective of, of things and I always wanted uh, to work with Ian Golter but I didn't have that opportunity um, at that time. So when I got the job at Exeter in 1994 um, it was this uh, project that I was going to work on, and that's the application of genetic algorithms uh, to water distribution systems. And that's what led me into this world of water distribution systems analysis. Can you talk some more about some of the key work you've done in the areas of optimization and artificial intelligence and data mining as you apply them in the water distribution system area? Yeah. It's interesting that one of your uh, first papers, and it's my, <laughs> one of my first papers in the water distribution area is um, one of my most cited papers, and that's the application of genetic algorithms for the optimal design of uh, water distribution systems. Um, funnily enough, the, the, the point of that paper wasn't the optimization. It was to show um, how these design solutions are sensitive to some assumptions that we take. So quite a lot of work that I do is to look into sensitivity, uncertainty of what we're doing. So developing kind of decision support uh, under that guise. Um, so we started with the design and when I sa say we, I used to work uh, with uh, a brilliant colleague, uh, Professor Godfrey Walters, who brought me into this field because uh, he was the older colleague. Um, and uh, he's done quite a lot of work in that area. So the two of us um, started exploring what the evolutionary computing can do in water distribution area. So um, 
I think in 97 we were first to publish this multi-objective analysis of um, <coughs> optimal design uh, that was done with a, a PhD student from Morocco, Dries Hal Hal. Uh, and then the things took off. We looked into robust design. How do we design something um, that will um, be less sensitive to whatever assumptions we introduced uh, in the process? And if you're looking more on the computer science and um, data mining stuff of things uh, with the colleagues from Italy, uh, Orazio Giustolisi, we developed a system um, that is going to be used later on both in academia and industry quite widely uh, for prediction, for example, of um, um, condition of a uh, condition state of pipes uh, in terms of uh, uh, pipe breakages and uh, um, quite a few other applications, demand, uh, prediction, um, and so on. Um, again, a uh, few other applications of, of, um, of recent work is in the area of real-time sensing and uh, the future is really um, looking quite bright in terms of the new technologies uh, brought by not just um, us understanding uh, how the systems kind of behave, water distribution systems in this case, but also bringing the advantages of the ICT development. I mean, this, this boom of, um, uh, you know, mobile phones, uh, personal uh, computing, um, uh, cloud computing, and so on. So, you know, I see great opportunities for uh, future generations of people working in the water distribution system analysis. The, the concept of district meeting, metering areas, DMAs, I think uh, dates back to probably the 1980s uh, here in the UK when it was primarily for, I think, loss management and accounting for water. Um, and it's starting, you know, in frequently recent years to become a, a, a topic of both research and maybe uh, actual implementation. Can you talk about some of the work you've done in that area? Yeah, that's an interesting one. And uh, DMAs are... Uh, the proof of that uh, famous saying, there is no free lunch. <laughs> um, anyway, so DMAs, as you say, were developed primarily for uh, managing smaller area in terms of leakage and water loss. Uh, but then we realized there are other performance indicators that we could um, also look into in terms of DMAs, like uh, when you divide the system in uh, smaller areas, you may compromise reliability because the whole system is interconnected, you're reducing that interconnectivity or um, you can play with pressures and um, uh, do something about the leakage in the system. So um, my group and quite a few colleagues from abroad who worked with me uh, and among them yourselves, we looked into how can we assess that performance uh, and also how can we design the DMAs now optimally or uh, near optimally um, so that we can achieve some kind of uh, trade-off of all those performance indicators. So we looked into graph theory and uh, different ways of creating the solutions and then evaluating them not just uh, on one uh, or two of those performance indicators but a uh, multitude of those. So a decision maker then can have a number of these solutions to choose from based on um, their own preferences. You've, you've mentioned several times the uh, kind of the interaction with the, the actual uh, pragmatic industry and, and some of your background was there. Um, do you want to talk a little more about how you've been able to marry this kind of theoretical work uh, and bring it into the practical field and, and, and I think probably its importance? Yes, um, I think my primary approach to things is uh, of an engineer uh, looking for problems to solve rather than a theoretician trying to apply certain methodologies. So, um, and the background that I have in the industry is such that I want to try and solve problems. So, um, when I moved to the UK, uh, the first um, was to try and talk to the industry and find out some data and what their problems are so that we can try and uh, uh, work together on them. 
And would you believe it, it took me two years to get the first set of data <laughs> out of the industry because initially there was quite a reticent uh, kind of relationship. Um, you know, academics are, uh, have been seen in the past mostly, uh, you know, ivory tower people and doing their own stuff. So we had to uh, demonstrate to the industry that we are genuinely interested in solving real, real problems. And um, after that first hurdle, I think um, I've been working with uh, most of the UK water companies and uh, quite a few abroad recently. Uh, we've been working with uh, people from um, a water supplies department in, in Hong Kong, um, in Canada, in a few other countries. Um, it's always a, um, a relationship that uh, relies on having a champion on both sides having somebody who has a genuine problem and it's looking he's looking or he or she is looking to to find a solution to it and that's where we come in to try and do that and has resulted in um, in quite a few uh, very close relationships uh, with these people um, particularly now when we are doing um, both research and demonstration projects for example in in the um, European um, Commission, most of the new, newly funded projects are demonstrations of the technology. Not anymore like on developing new stuff, but can we actually use best this stuff? So um, these people from the industry are very interested in that and we bring them into um, as a partner. So for example, on the latest ones I have sudden water from um, the UK, I have Southwest Water uh, on another project, Welsh Water on another, so quite a few of these involved in uh, genuine demonstration projects, so past research being um, kind of validated in, in the field. You, you've mentioned several people who you've either mentored or worked with or worked under. Um, anyone else you want to uh, in particular maybe mention? That, uh... Yes, well obviously um, I owe quite a lot to um, Godfrey Walters and uh, uh, quite a few colleagues um, in Europe and abroad. Um, very difficult to um, kind of uh, single a few of those, but if I have to, for example, uh, Zoran Kaplan uh, from my group, uh, Kobus von Zell, uh, who was my PhD student, um, Orazio Giustulisi, who I work very, very closely. Uh, a large number of Italian colleagues who are extremely, extremely good and uh, strong in water distribution system area. Um, and uh, quite a few North Americans as, uh, um, you know, um, Tom Wolski uh, in particular. Um, and the people that um, I think brushed upon the group in Adelaide in Australia, uh, extremely strong, Avi Osfeld. Um, so, yeah, I think that's enough. But you know, I could go on and on with names of people who influenced my work and who I learned from uh, along the period. Uh, you know, looking into the future, uh, what do you foresee for our industry? Um, there is always the problem of water loss, I think, and that's uh, a big issue in uh, quite a few countries. Um, uh, deterioration of infrastructure and uh, the neglect of the last 30, 40, 50 years um, and the lack of investment uh, is one of the issues that we'll have to deal with uh, or future generations will have to deal with. Um, climate change is another, um, another big issue that is looming. Um, if we kind of have the changes in, in weather patterns and, and uh, water availability, then we will have uh, serious issues. I, uh, I think that uh, this, uh, the internet of things um, and, um, you know, um, the ability to sense um, information from various uh, sources is going to be very, very important. How do we integrate water services with uh, electricity, transport and other services in big cities? Um, most or more than half of the population of the world currently lives in the cities. It's predicted that's going to grow. Uh, what is going to happen with delivering services in mega cities um, of the future? Uh, China, India, uh, are going to have those uh, large problems. Combine that with depleted groundwater, 
um, resources, high variability, I think there will be quite a lot of work uh, for foreseeable future. <laughs> Any other parting words? Well, I think um, your uh, questioning was quite comprehensive. Um, that's all. I, I, I would just say uh, I worked with lots of um, young people and learned from them, and that's probably one of the best things um, out of this interest in water distribution systems analysis. Thank you very much. Thank you.